All right, guys. I don't know if anybody's here yet. I guess not. Hmm. Hey, uh, I'm I'm working on getting chat set up. I don't know how this works necessarily, so still working on that. Uh, <laughs> hey Mike, how's it going? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's Saturday. Hey Robert, thanks for joining, guys. Um, I I don't know. I don't have a plan for this stuff, so um, oh Cummins Customs, that's interesting. <laughs> hey Dylan, how's it going, man? Um, glad you guys could join. So, um, I don't have any plan or anything to talk about here, so if you guys just want to chat, if you got questions or whatever, um, I was, uh, playing with my lion here. I've got it on my, uh, one of my Krauss field cultivators. I'm kind of trying to, uh, rework my display a little bit. It's, uh, I, I just got some stuff going on, and so, oh, Nice. Um, yeah, so I want to, um, I want to build a fertilizer dealer on my display. I did that before and I know I did a video about this one other time, but, um, I want to do it again. And, uh, Adam Sunken from Mini mm -hmm. Toy Truck and Tractor is going to, um, make me, or not make me. He's got those new Quonsets coming out, so I'm going to do one of those. Would you be able to do custom pickup trucks? Um, yeah, contact Mike, <laughs> because I don't do a lot of custom pickup trucks. Like, the only things I've done, uh, I weathered this guy to just make him look like he's been on the farm for a million years. So, um, there's that. Um, I'll, like, do... Like I put a I put a compressor in the back of this one and it's uh I painted it black like one of those cheapo Harbor Freight compressors because that's what I have on uh, my pickup truck because I'm cheap you know like if you can pay nine hundred bucks for a compressor that will do the job of a four thousand dollar compressor I kind of feel like the nine hundred dollar compressor you can buy that four times so <laughs> just bought some paints for more one sixty four scale farm trucks cool I can't wait to see those Dylan that's cool. Uh, I love farm trucks, and it's something I want to do more of in the future. Let's see. Let's uh, move that back. And you can kind of see what I got in front of me here, kind of messing around with right now. Um, yeah, where... My tripod for my phone, because that's what I'm doing this on, is just about shot. I'm going to have to get a new one. Let's see if that works out any better. Sorry for the... Uh... Oh, I just knocked over my... There we go. That's better. I like that a lot better. Got some orange juice I'm drinking. Ford flatbed dually. Yeah, that would be cool. I want a flatbed myself, and I'm debating on just buying one from somebody. Um, I don't know. Like That's that's what I'm debating on. Anyway, we'll see. Because um, I don't have any flatbeds right now, and I know there's some out there, like on, uh, I don't know, Shapeways and some other places, but... I just ordered 10 Speccast 2000. Nice. Nice. I almost bought some more of those actually the other day. So like one of these guys, huh? Um, <laughs> I almost bought some the other day, but then I'm like, well, what the heck am I going to do with that? Uh, this is the Authentic. Uh, the number two from John Deere. They brought out, I don't know, probably says on the bottom here. Uh, gosh, I can't, I can't read anything anymore. I'm just blind. Anyway, pretty cool sprayer. Um, they're still around. You can get these, like, reasonably, relatively reasonably priced. Okay, why are you not going up? I mean, it's a, it's a really cool sprayer. The, uh, um, you know, it goes up and down. It's obviously a huge boom. I think this is a 120 boom. It's got all the rails and all that stuff. Okay, it's being really contrary, though, about going up into the holder there. But 
yeah, it's a really cool sprayer. I'll, I'll do a video on this one of these days. I'm sorry I got so much shadow going on here. I think it's this light here that's messing with me. So I'm going to turn that off. That's a little... That's a little better, right? <clears throat> I made a custom Dodge flatbed to a cool... Yeah, cool. So, um... So we have a Dodge at the farm. We have like this white Ram. It's like a 2014 model. It's a uh, 3500. And we have one of those nap eyed tool beds on it with the fifth wheel hitch. And so I kind of want to do one of those um, someday. Like, and I've got one somewhere. <laughs> and I actually did a 3D print of that tool bed, but I've never gotten around to actually building the truck. So we'll see. One of these days. That's on my list to do. We'll, we'll get to there. I don't know. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> um, too much other stuff going on. Ah, so here's my, here's my spray tinder truck. And I'm going to do a video because one of you guys asked um, about different s trucks for spraying. Like, so, like this sort of thing. And so I've got, I've got this Pete. Let me get this Steiger out of the way. I've got this peat I did, and I cut up a Speccast flatbed, and I put some tanks on there. I've got some other stuff I want to add to it, but for right now, that, that'll work. And then I've got this big flatbed that I did that is sort of like a, um, I don't know, everything spring trailer, if you will. So I've got like the big water tank, I've got... Um, um, what do I want to call those? Pro boxes. Chemical totes, more water. I've got like the cone separator and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I've got hose reels. There's, you know, there's even a little like Honda motor on there and so on and so forth. So, uh, there's that. And then <clears throat> this was one of those top shelf, um, trucks that they did a while back. I think, yeah, this is top shelf, right? I think it was. And, um, so I, I, I made up a little, like, water tender truck with it. And then, of course, you know, you could do all sorts of stuff. You could just pull a gooseneck or whatever if you want. But, anyway, so I'm going to do a video on that. I hope maybe this weekend we'll see how this weekend goes. And then, uh, I want to do a video on the bifold door of my shop. And then the shop in general. Nate, Nate from Nate's Farm Toys made my shop. And he did this really cool bifold door, so... What is my favorite tractor brand? Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, John Deere and Case IH, Massey Ferguson. I don't know. I, I I like them all. Like when I say I love tractors, I really mean it. I I, I like them all. I'm gonna go with uh, Steiger. <laughs> I mean, that's that's really it, right? It is. It's Tiger. Uh, all right, where the heck? So there were some chats, and of course they disappear on my phone. Video on making a whole barn. So yeah, I'm going to do... Um, Nate is sending me a kit that he's doing, and I'm going to build that and do a video on it, and he's doing video on it, videos on it as well. Um, so there's that. Am I going to get one of those row crop John Deere quad tracks? Yeah. I am. I think they're cool. Um, I'll definitely get one. Uh, I'll probably get a couple, and I'll probably detail a few of them. <laughs> um, and then, you know, maybe sell off. I don't know. Whatever. But, yeah, I, I definitely want at least one of those on my farm. And I think, uh, so I ordered one of those John Deere anniversary sets. Um, you know, the silver ones that have the quad track in it. And I think that's a row crop quad track, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Um... Either way, I ordered one. I paid a fortune for it. I paid like 70 bucks for it because the local dealer didn't order any. Yeah. Blows my mind, but whatever. Does Nate have... Not yet, but he is doing one. He's going to start one up when he gets these uh, this next round of barns done. Or, you know, sheds and stuff. And um, so he's getting that all together. And I think he... Like, he told me he was hoping like for a couple weeks is when he was going to have all that up and running. So, um you know, give or take a little bit, but, you know, his stuff is really cool, which, I mean, if you guys have seen my, uh, my display, you know, I mean, he's built every, every shed on my display, except for this machine shed, which I built 
quite a while ago, and someday he's going to build me something to replace this. It's just, we've got other projects in the works first. <laughs> so, yeah. I, um, I kind of want to open my laptop here because the chat on that thing is goofy. Do you know if Ertl will make 1 16th or 1 32nd scale? Um, Chris, Chris Steeb, maybe, or Chris Stern? I don't know Chris Stern, but I know Chris Steeb. Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely friends with Chris Steeb. Uh, I haven't talked to him for a little bit, though. Um, we kind of messaged back and forth a month ago about something, uh, one of the kits I had on my Shapeway store, but I haven't had a chance to talk to him since. I need to give him a call. Um, yeah, Chris is mega talented. I mean, that's just all there is to it. His his abil ability to detail out a farm toy display is second to none. And I always try to learn from him. When he is at a show, like he goes to St. Louis quite a bit, um, I always look over his, his display with a fine tooth comb because there's always something to learn there. He's just one of those guys. So, um, All right, I missed a question there. That's why I'm trying to bring up this live chat because I, I totally missed something there. Yeah, he's a good guy. He, he like Chris is he's fun. Um, he's he's a smart guy. All right. How many trucks and trailers do I have? Um. I'm gonna guess in the neighborhood of like twenty. I have I have five black peats with hopper bottoms. I have a, a dump trailer. I have a low boy trailer. I have two low boy trailers, and then I have like some miscellaneous weird stuff. So, okay. So how many acres? Yeah, how many acres does the toy farm run? So we are running four thousand acres right now. There was some talk of going to 8,000. I mean, I kind of discussed it with Pierce Johnson a little bit because he's one of those, like, big, you know, go big or go home guys. Um, I decided that was too many. That's just, like, too many tractors. I don't want to be, like, this huge farmer. I want to still be able to use older equipment, too. Um, you know, so I don't, you know, I don't want to be one of those toy farms that just rolls over new equipment all the time. Like, I want a Steiger or two sitting around on my farm. So, um this winter, I'm going to get it all kind of hammered out. We'll see, because that's probably really subject to change. We may still do less or more. Um, I don't know. And then I have a project. There's some guys that want me to take something to St. Louis uh, next year to the show, to the display contest. But I, I don't know if I can have it to the level of detail I want it by then, because things are so busy right now. So... We will see. Um, so I missed a question about once the will will Ertl make a sixteenth or thirty second scale cotton picker? I want to cover that real quick. As of right now, there are no plans that I know of, but I kind of feel like there's a chance they will um, because they're they're every couple of years they're branching off into something else. So like we got those sugarcane harvesters a while back, and I feel like there's probably enough demand for a cotton picker that maybe we'll see one in another scale. You know, we've definitely got them in 164 scale. It would be really cool to see one of those in a bigger scale, but let's be honest, 116 scale cotton picker is going to be super expensive. I mean, I bet that would be a 250 or $300 toy. So that might be tough. We'll see, though. Do I have a 8530-2007 farm show? You know what? I don't think I do. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, do I ever use K&N brass tubing, etc.? Because I bought some, tried soldering it, can't do it to save my life. Yeah, I can't solder to save my life either. I, I'm terrible at it. There's just all there is to it. So you've got to use, uh, uh, you've got to use your flux with it. And then there's a certain kind of solder that works on brass. And I can't for the life of me. It's either lead or lead free or, I, I don't remember, um, I'll try to find that info, though. But, yeah, I can't solder for crap. <laughs> All right. How many tractors do you have? Oh, boy. Um, a lot. I, I don't know. I quit counting at 500, and that was 10 years ago. 
<laughs> so <laughs> it's it's a lot. Um, okay, I tried making hay and cattle display, but it turned out crappy. I made a tiny tiny display, and it turned out alright. Yeah, so I kind of like the idea of smaller displays, and um, I think one it makes you be more creative, and it makes you put in more detail because you have to. Um, you've got to pack every bit of your story into a small space. So you're concentrating on this little area more. So I like the smaller displays. And so that's why I really, and in this upcoming winter on my own display, I'm going to focus, just laser focus on this fertilizer dealership and make sure it's as good as it can be. So um, yeah, small displays are cool. Like, I, I really like them. I'm actually drawn to them at the shows, like, especially at, like, the St. Louis show. I tend to go to those smaller displays first before I go to somebody that's got, like, 16 by 8 or whatever, you know, their giant display is. Um, like I said, I just think it takes more effort, so. Any upcoming tractors you're planning to get? Yeah, so, um... I kind of want to get that silver John Deere anniversary quad track that they've got coming out. Um, I think it's really cool, but it's really expensive. So I don't know if I will, but that's kind of what I want to do. That That's definitely on my radar. Um, that new authentic that's, I think it's out right now, actually. Uh, this, it's like, it's basically the, uh, it's basically this tractor, but with front wheel assist and singles. I want it. Uh, I want several of those. I've got some plans for them. Um, yeah, and then we'll see. There's. Uh, I just saw, somebody just sent me a message yesterday that there's a 132nd scale brand new cat uh, challenger. Hey, what's up, Farmer 164? Uh, that there's a brand new cat, uh, well, not, I don't know, challenger, whatever, track tractor coming out in 132nd scale. And I told myself I was done with 132nd scale, but I want that. So... I'll probably get that. So for right now, those are the three, probably, but there'll be more. <laughs> What's better, a bumper pull flatbed trailer or a gooseneck flatbed trailer? Good question. Um, I prefer goosenecks on the farm. In real life, I kind of rather pull a bumper trailer, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. So it depends on what you're pulling, I guess. But, um... I tend to like goosenecks on my model farm a little bit more. What do you use to hold all your custom farm toys together? So, um, depending on what it is. So if I'm scratch building out of plastic, I use Plasto Weld, which you can get at any hobby store, lots of places online, whatever. And basically you take two pieces of styrene, you brush on your Plasto Weld, you hold those together, and it kind of welds uh, the plastic together. It's a really strong bond, so that's what this entire lion is held together with plasti weld. Uh, the other thing I use is BSI Industries Super Glue, and then you get the Instaset Activator by it as well. It's a little expensive, it's worth it. Uh, because it just, a drop of that super glue, a drop of that activator, boom, you're done, and you can, you can move quick. Um, doing it that way, <laughs> let me put together 117 shanks on this field cultivator in about, oh, two hours. Where if I didn't use the Insta set, it would definitely take a couple days. So, all right. Um, I have a John Deere S680 164th, and I wanted to make it an S690. Yeah, so I think one just a decal change. Uh, those Ertl castings are basically identical. Um, you might think about doing a hopper bin extension, or you know, like a different. I think it's got the. Uh, cone or whatever the foldable style uh, there is somebody it might be Adam Frerichs that is making uh, the like kind of regular do I have that here I do but I'm not gonna be able to get there <laughs> um, yeah so maybe a hopper bin extension I don't know and then um, you know put some beefy tires on there so that it looks cool I always like those big super like single rice tires up front. I think those look awesome on an X69 S690 and I'm going to do one myself someday. Um you know, other than that, things you might want is like a nice big Gehringhoff header or something. <laughs> do you have any gooseneck trailers if show so please show us. 
Um, I do. Let's see here. <clears throat> so I scratch built this trailer like a hundred years ago. Well, maybe not, but twenty years ago anyway. So I used balsa wood that I stained for the deck. Everything else is styrene. These uh, wheels and tires come from uh, Standy Toys, or I guess it's Mini Toy Truck and Tractor now. And um, so you can see, I just made it to fit into an Ertl. And then I use this to haul around my 164 scale Massey 97. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's kind of the only one I guess I've made, or at least recently, or that I have available. So... Uh, have you heard about the new 160? Yes, the the Alice Chalmers 7080. I'm getting that. I forgot. I'm glad you reminded me. Yeah, that, that thing is cool. The three-point hitch is awful on that, but that's such an easy fix, and that is a cool tracker. So, yeah, I, I, I want that for sure. Um, What is some good building material to look for when getting started building customs? styrene plastic go find a hobby store if you can if you can't go to like hobby link or tower hobbies online um and get like a variety pack if you will of plastic uh like tubing framing rod so on and so forth and then just see what sizes you use uh because everybody's different on what they like and don't like so definitely do that and um like i said styrene is easy to work with it's easy to cut it's easy to file it's easy to glue together so, uh, do I have a particular favorite brand of tractor? Yes, yeah, so Steiger. <laughs> um, do you have a, a 9760 STS? Yeah, I do somewhere. Um, not there. See, we used to run a 9760 on the farm. So, Basically, when it comes to combines, um, I try to get what we had or have. Now, I do have some, like, cats and things like that that we don't have, but they're just cool. Um, darn, I had that. It may be, gosh, this chair is getting worse and worse. It may be at my office, the 9760. And I just detailed it out with, like, a Moore's kit, Moore's Farm Toys kit, so... Do I have any Ford trucks? I do. I have the Speccast Ford uh, here. Uh, I've got two of those. And then I have the Speccast Ford with the Dewey's bed that uh, Carson Bryan whipped up. And then I've got, oh, hey, you know what? <laughs> I missed this one. Here's another gooseneck. While we're on the topic of goosenecks, uh, this one is made by Standy Toys. And this was made a long time ago. It's all metal. It's pretty cool. And then anyway, and then I've got like this old Ertl Ford Dually um, around. So yeah, I, I got a few Fords, definitely. My my area is getting cluttered here. <laughs> uh, is there a one thirty second scale sprayer on the market? You know, I don't think there is. And I'm kind of surprised. It seems like that'd be a big seller, especially. I don't know. Do, do they use these like? Do they use this type of sprayer over in Europe? Because a lot of what we get in 132nd scale is dictated by Europe. Because 132nd scale is huge over there. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. Good question. If there's not, there definitely should be. Uh, maybe, maybe Ertl will do that someday. The barns you have, did you build? Nope. <laughs> no, I have Nate from Nate's Farm Toys do that. Uh, absolutely, just call, give him a call or check his Facebook page out, actually. And um, he's a busy guy, not going to sugarcoat it. Um, but he, he's incredible. He, he's awesome. So, All right, are you planning on making a hay and dairy display anytime soon? I want to. I've never done uh, anything with livestock before. And I've got this little corner of my display over there that has just been neglected for years. And I kind of thought about putting in a little pasture with some cows. And then, you know, I could do maybe some hay with it and things like that. So I, I want to. I doubt I get to it this winter, but maybe after I get the fertilizer dealership part, I can go back into that corner and do that. Because I, I do want to do that. It's It would be a challenge for me because I've never done it, so... 
All right. Uh, favorite custom pickup truck. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of custom pickup trucks. And so I guess I just, I'm going to have to build one. That's just all there is to it. And I guess it'd have to be like my, my weathered and worn Chevy here. I mean, you can see I kind of rusted it out and did all that stuff. I guess that'd have to be it. Because otherwise I really don't have any custom pickup trucks. I need to get, I need to just buy one or make one. I don't know. One of these days. All right. What, let's see if I missed anything. Yeah, so a gooseneck J&M seed tender would be cool, Jacob. That would be really cool. Um, make one. <laughs> That'd probably be the best thing you could do. Um, what I would do is take... So Ertl had these, and I don't know if I've got one anymore or not. Ertl had these, um, these like dump beds that were... I think I've got one. Well, shoot. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so I don't have one. Um, Ertl made these dump beds. They were like red and they had a black frame and it was a gooseneck. And you can get them for nothing at a toy show. I mean like five bucks at the most. I would take one of those and then maybe build a seed tender around it. Or maybe take one of those unreferred seed tender bodies and put on it. I don't know. But that, that's a doable project, probably without too much work. Um, you know, just some paint and some glue and some cutting and ingenuity. Yeah, so that would be cool, though. I, that would be really cool. Do I know who makes 164-scale grain vacuums? Um, Terre Haute Customs might. Uh, check them out on Facebook. I'm not sure, but they might. And I'm trying to think this... I don't know that I've seen others, but for some reason, I feel like or maybe maybe I'm thinking they may make forage blowers, maybe not vacuums. Um, anyway, that's where I would start. He does some cool stuff like that sometimes. Um, I'll keep my eye out though because I'm not for sure. Yeah. So, um, do you know how Ertl decides on what products to make? So. A lot of it is dictated by the manufacturers. So like John Deere comes to them and says, uh, we want you to make our new quad track or whatever. So that's some of it. And then the rest of it is they have to determine uh, how much of something will sell and then um, how much it will cost them to make it and then see if they can make money doing it. So it's tricky and it's this really weird balancing act. And then of course, from the time they decide to do something to the time they get something to market it's a couple of years so it's it's tricky it's uh, they have a tough job on figuring out what to make so what's the combine on my real farm so we have a s670 john deere on the real farm we have a an eight row chopping corn head and then we have a macdon draper for our cutting platform Oh yeah, good good call, Nebraska farmer. Uh, I bet Matson does have vacuums. I, uh, yeah, Dale. I bet Dale does, and they, they'd be pretty good. So, uh, and he's usually pretty reasonably priced on everything. So check out Matson's miniatures, and um, I bet he's got some. Where's well, where's my favorite website to get toys? So, uh, Outback Farm Toys, uh, Bows and Implement. Those are kind of the two I go to. eBay. Sometimes you can find deals on eBay. A lot of times you can't anymore. Like eBay used to be awesome. You used to be able to find deals all the time, but now no. So, okay. Do I live stream often? Well, this is the first one. So I don't know. We may do this semi-regularly. I'll try if that's something you guys want to do. Um, I don't mind doing it. It's, it's kind of fun. Uh, my life is busy right now, but you know, definitely... Uh, come winter time, I could probably definitely have more time to do this, but it'd be kind of cool to do this maybe once a month or so. Just we can talk toys. I mean, that's I, you know that's the whole the whole reason I created for the love of tractors the Facebook page, the Instagram page, and this YouTube is so that we can talk tractors with people. Because um, I think a lot of you guys probably are in the same situation I am, where you live in rural America, and yeah, there's a lot of people that like tractors and stuff here, but you don't really have people that you can talk toys and things like that with. So. Um, this was a great way to just do that. <laughs> um, have you seen Vermeer self-propelled baler? I have not. Um, ooh, that'd be cool, though. 
Oh, okay. Colin says he did not see any at Matson's. Okay. Well, shoot. Um, I was thinking uh, to take my old j and gravity wagon and put it on an old Gooder... Go oh, yeah. That's a great idea. That that would work awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Jacob. That that would be cool. That Yeah, you should do that. And then if you do, I want to see pictures. Because <laughs> that would be cool. Um, all right. Uh... Do I like Landall Tillage? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Landall Till All, right here. Um, Landall VT. I have two Landall Finish Alls on my model farm. And then, oh, you know, I, I sold my Landall Rip All. Uh, I got to make myself a new one. Um, here's another smaller Landall finishing tool that I made. And then, well, I have a, thir I have a 30 foot Landall VT laying around here somewhere. And then I also have. So here's an in-progress weatherproofer, too. <laughs> so yeah, I got a thing for my uh, I like this chat with Ingrid, you came around the farm and says, Yeah, maybe, um, maybe come farming, like we'll be cutting wheat here in about uh, 10 days, maybe two weeks at the most. Maybe I could do a live chat then, but a lot of the problem is where I farm is cell phone signal. And I would do a heck of a lot more... Um, if I had better cell phone signals, <laughs> so that's what sucks about that. And someday, like I heard they're actually putting up a new tower pretty close to the farm. So I hope that solves some of my problem, but live chat may be pretty unreliable there, but we'll see. We'll try it. What the heck? <clears throat> All right. Um, uh, do you have any 40 series tractors? Yeah, I do. Somewhere. Um, I have like a... I assume, are we, wait, well, are we talking four-wheel drives, like 83, 40, 84, 40, so on and so forth? Because if so, yeah, I do. Um, I like those. The One of the first four-wheel drives I ever drove was a 8430, actually. So that kind of started that sort of thing. <laughs> do you sell a Landall VT on your Shapeway store? I do not, um... There's some other guys working on a Landall VT, and so I'm just not going to step on their toes. Um, there's no need to me doing it if somebody else is going to do it. And uh, when they do one, I'll uh, I'll get one. I'll build it, and uh, we'll do a video on it, and that way you guys know. And then I'll tell you who it is. That way, because, um, you know, right now they may not want people to know. <laughs> so, um, do you have a drone? I wish. Maybe someday. Like, I, I mean, th I feel like that's going to happen, right? Um, where am I from? Illinois, the middle of nowhere. Um, pretty close to Missouri, actually. I'm right on the border. Earl needs to make more implements. Yes, they do, CW. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh, 4440, 4020, 4010. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I love the 4020 and 4010. Uh, and so I've got a couple of those around. That's not one there, though. Um here we go this is just a really light custom 4020 i did with uh that and then i've got another one excuse me i've got another one i'm gonna do um it's gonna have like rails and um like the hydraulics and all that stuff on there um, and it's all tore apart right now. That's, I, I was hoping to get it done before winter was over last winter and it just didn't happen. So, um, this winter I'll get it done. Um, how many 164 scale sprayers do I have? Ooh. I'm going to say eight. I've got, I've got the authentic John Deere that I showed you. I bought that John Deere Hagee set. Uh, I've got a Miller Nitro. I've got uh, a few other John Deere, and I, I probably I may start thinning those out come winter time because 
Um, I want to get rid of some of the stuff that I just have, like, too much of, like, you know, sprayers. I don't need a ton of sprayers. I'm not really a sprayer collectible. I'm a four-wheel drive collector, so we'll see. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've got, I think, eight right, right now. And it, a lot of those, like the Miller and the New Holland and some of those Hagees, I bought so that I could do reviews. And then I said to myself, ah, oh, you'll just sell those off someday. And then, of course, someday never comes. Uh, Simon, I am over by Quincy, kind of middle of nowhere, um, like south of Quincy. What about loader trackers? Uh, I have a 6420 I made somewhere. And it's just, I just took a 6420, actually I think it was a 60, I don't remember. I, I, uh, I had to re-decal it. I had to stick an Ertl loader on it. I want to do, uh, Matt Cassidy, uh, Circle C Farm Toys has a really high detail loader on his Shaveways store. And I want to do that someday, but, uh, it's like a hundred bucks or pretty close to it. So that's in the someday file because that's a lot of money to spend on a loader. But I want to do a really high detail one. Other than that, I've got maybe like the Ertl... You know, I've got like these, like these crappy 1980s Ertl. Um, I shouldn't say crappy. They were, they were great for what they were. And <laughs> this one got played with hard when I was a kid. So, um, you know, I've got that. Uh, I've got the Case IH one. I think I've got a John Deere one. Uh, but not a lot of loader trackers. All right. Well, I'm going to see if I missed any questions here. I don't think I, I don't think I did. Um, if I did, ask me again. Oh, <laughs> uh, which which DCP? Um, yeah. So what are you guys working on? I mean, I'm I'm sitting here going on. What are you guys working on? Or what what are your plans for? Uh, what tractors are you guys buying and displaying and uh, all that stuff? I'm curious. I, I like to. I like to hear that stuff. Oh, DCP trucks, they're 164 scale. They, uh, they're perfect for a 164 scale farm. Oh, okay, Evansville. Yeah, so you're kind of on the opposite side of the state. So. Yeah, no problem, farmer boy. Anytime. I was going to see if there's something I was going to show you guys or whatever. I don't know. We'll, we'll find something here. <clears throat> Get some stuff out of the way. So these, these Gehringhoff headers I did, they break so freaking easy, which is why I haven't... Uh, which is why I haven't put a bunch out or put the kit out yet because and I, I've had a lot of guys ask me for them But god, they like you can see that's already broken and it and it's Like I've tried to be gentle with them and then of course here's like the adapter that I'm working on Megan and uh, uh, Dave Holloman said that he Has an adapter and I'm gonna try I'm gonna try his out and see if it'll work on this um, this header because you've got a got to come with an adapter that will fit on basically every combine out there and it's hard to do so <laughs> so anyway I, I hope at some point i'm selling some of those gearing off headers because uh i am deep in those in time right now and so i'd like to get some of that investment back <laughs> chevy man says he only buys and collects ih stuff that's cool i like ih stuff i mean here is my, uh, of course this is case IH, but here's the quad track that I built. That is not the Ertl Authentic. Oh man, that chair, I gotta get that fixed. Where is my Authentic? Um, it, <laughs> that's terrible. Here is the Authentic. So, um, yeah, I like IH. I want to do a, uh, I want to do like a 1066 front wheel assist. Like that's that's on my to-do list pretty high on my to-do list. I think those look awesome with front wheel assist. So All right, I just got a 164 scale 85. Oh, you cool you so you've got the 2007. That's cool that yeah that 8530 
I don't have one of those. I won't. I kind of want one, but um, those farm show tractors can be hard to find sometimes. So uh, you just never know. Could I show off my favorite stuff? Absolutely. So well, this quad track will be pretty high on the list. <laughs> um, I so I scratch built the hood, uh, the front grill. And the entire rear end of this tractor is all scratch built. So, um, how many 164 scale? You've got a little over 20. Oh, you've got more than I do. <laughs> um, I said earlier I quit counting at 500. I, I'm over 1,000, but I'm nowhere near 2,500. So, that's awesome. That's an impressive collection. So, that's cool. Um, yeah, so anyway, so this is one of my favorite pieces for sure. Um, we'll put this guy away. And then, you know, I think you guys know I'm kind of nutso about Steiger. And so, uh, my Lions are definitely in my favorite pieces book. So, you know, I don't know. I just, I've always just liked those trackers. I like the green, uh, the Steiger green for whatever reason. As a kid, I remember seeing a, um, a Panther. It was about, I don't know, 20 miles from here. And I was just, I just remember it looked so huge to me. And at the time, we probably, I don't think we would have had four-wheel drives at the time. I think our biggest tractor would have been like a 4960 John Deere. So, you know, I was blown away. <laughs> and, and so there you go, Steiger. Um, so, like I said, these, these two are definitely high up on my list of favorites. So, um, all right, da, da, da. I'll show you, I'll show some more favorite stuff in a minute. I don't, I don't want to get behind on questions though. Do you watch how farms work? If you don't, you should watch them. Uh, cool. I'll check it out, Simon. I assume that's a YouTube uh, channel. I'll check them out for sure. Do you have any websites that would be good for buying 164 scale tractors? So, um, outbacktoystore.com and bosonimplement.com check ebay because you never know what's going to turn up on ebay i mean just do like 164 scale farm toys for your search or like 164 scale custom farm toys if you're after that whatever you just never know what you're going to find on there you might find something awesome for cheap um those are my go-to there are some other websites and i'm not going to run anybody down um but there's some other websites that i don't trust so much in the farm toy world and um and don't get me wrong there's others that are excellent too um so you know i don't want to steer you away from that heartland customs dave holloman he, he's got a website he's got a lot of custom stuff he's awesome he is top notch to deal with um highly suggest him uh if you need parts and things like that um oh hey thanks farm boy um if um you need parts or wheels and tires check out mini toy truck and tractor uh, Adam Sunkin runs that. He's an incredible guy. I'm sure I'm... Oh, CD Models, my buddy Dave. <laughs> How did I forget that? Um, yeah, he, he does... But th that's all custom stuff, and that's all parts. So if you're not into that, you don't want to go to those places. But um, if you're into that, there's, those are some great sites too. So you got your 8530 pretty cheap. Cool. Hey, Tyson, how's it going? Um... Yeah, like you, like eBay blows my mind because sometimes you'll see something on eBay that's like ridiculous expensive. Like, how could that cost that much? And then you'll find something that's just unbelievably cheap. I got a, uh, um, I don't know if I've got it here or not. Um, I picked up a custom. Oh yeah, here it is. <clears throat> I picked up this like custom side dresser bar on eBay one time. I think I paid like 20 or 25 bucks for it. And I just, I couldn't believe it. That was so cheap. Um, I mean, if I were selling that thing, I'd do it for like 40 or 50 bucks. <laughs> so you just never know. Um, all right. I want to get 116, uh, 64 scale spec cast John Deere planner, but I don't know which one to get. Let me show you my all time favorite John Deere uh, spec cast planner. <clears throat> this guy <laughs> i think this is so cool um because i love the way it folds around the front like that you know and so now you've got like this nice big planner 
but it's old school. Uh, it's really nicely detailed. I mean, this is a really done planner. It's re it's durable. It's a lot of metal. It's a lot of plastic, too, but it's really durable. And then, like I said, I just love the way it folds around the front. So, um, you know, and if you want a new one, if you want one of those new DB planners, you know, just, just pick the size uh, to the tractor that you want uh, to put on in front of it. But <laughs> if I had, if I could only get one SpecCast John Deere planner, it'd be this guy. So... <laughs> Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, 12 row case. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Do I have any bailing? Am I a Ford guy? So I'm a New Holland guy. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I like Ford tractors. I think they're cool. I want to do, um, I want to do a really nice one someday, but you know, and I sold off one of my New Hollands. Well, yeah, I did, I guess. Anyway, I'm building, I'm building myself another 9882 New Holland. Um, and then I got this, so I'm really kind of like, I, I was thrilled to death. This is a Chaser Farm Show Edition uh, Smart Tracks that I got this year at the uh, Farm Progress Show. <laughs> and I like I almost jumped out of the car when I opened the box and saw it. <laughs> so, um, all right. Do you have an 8220R hook to an 11? I do not. How often do you sell stuff? Uh, in the winter time, uh, I'm selling stuff about every week, maybe like two or three pieces a week. Uh, in the summertime, it's pretty rare. Although I'm gonna put uh, these fertilizer buggies up on eBay uh, this weekend if I get the chance, because I've, I'm kind of overrun with them and I want to get some out of here. And you know whatever <laughs> an older 24 row planter any suggestions custom you're gonna have to do custom on that um for sure but um you could make your own fairly easy and what i would do i mean it, easy but not cheap <laughs> i would get one of those 24 row either like the early riser um, you know, if you want a case or whatever, like this, and um, because you've got the frame and everything here already, or you could get the John Deere uh, DB, and then if you wanted boxes, I would get you a couple of these 12s, and then I'd just take the boxes off these and stick them on your frame for your 24 row. That would be the easiest way uh, to do that. What's my eBay account? So my eBay account is LJS Tractors and Angels, and that's like a 25-year-old eBay account from back when uh, we were selling a lot of everything. So do you have a 9560RT? I... 9560, no. <laughs> um, I have one RT. Let me see if I can grab... Well, one, one nine series RT. Oh, my wheel came off. <laughs> All right, this guy. This is a ninety six thirty T. Sorry, that's not an RT. That's a thirty series. So, uh, you can see what I did to it. Um, this is my. Uh, ladder kit that you can get on my Shapeway store, which is FTLOT. And then, um, so you get the rails, you get the steps, all that good stuff. And then I cut out the rear end here and built, you can see, uh, a realistic draw bar and hitch. And then I put on flashers and all the other good stuff to just kind of make that look cool. So... <clears throat> Hey, what's up, Braden? Hey, it's me. How's it going? Cool. New phone. What phone did you get? Um, Apple, Android. What? I don't know. Do you know how to make a custom grain auger? Uh, how big do you want? Because if you want a small unloading auger, CD Models has some pretty awesome kits for not too expensive. Otherwise, get some brass tube or styrene tube, cut it to length, and then uh, you're going to have to make all of that... Um, that wheel and undercarriage stuff. And I've got one I would show you, but it, there's no way I'm getting to it right now because, <laughs> because I've got some, 
containers in the way. I'll do a video on it though. I made a couple over the years and uh, I'll do a video one of these days on, on my augers. So. Aha, okay, Apple, cool. Yeah, I remember you. Let's see, I missed a question up here somewhere. Maybe, maybe I didn't. I just swore to you, I did. Yeah, no problem, Simon. Um, well, and yeah, so you guys got some more questions or, or whatever. I'll uh, I'll do a couple more of my favorite pieces. So this is so this had potential to be a favorite piece, but I kind of goofed it up. Thoughts on Kinsey Grand Car? I love them. Uh, we use a Kinsey on the farm. We use a 1050 soft track. I have. Uh, multiple Kinsey grain carts laying around here. They're actually up under the display because I've got all my harvest stuff put away. But um, anyway, I was going to show you guys this blue jet that I did. Um, but but the paint on it got jacked up and I don't know why. And so I'm not particularly happy with it. And uh, it's one of those things where it's not good enough to go on my display and it's it's probably not good enough to sell because I still have a ton of money into it. So whatever. <laughs> That's the problem when you build stuff sometimes. Uh, I've been watching for a long time. Wanted to ask if it's okay or to clarify as a farm toy lover, if you quit farming for a month and then came back. Yeah. I mean, I so from farm toys, I've taken a long time off before. Like sometimes you just get burnt out and you just got to put it away for a while. Uh, in fact, I haven't built anything for probably a month now. And it's not that I don't want to. It's that other things kind of get in the way and take priority. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's always okay to take off. So. Yeah, Leona. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh. How's it going? Yeah, I, I like Landall. I, you missed my, I think you missed my tour of my Landall stuff a little bit ago. <laughs> so I just showed off a bunch of it. <laughs> yeah, you'll take it. I, I, I'm sure there, Jacob. Yeah. <laughs> do I have a John Deere sugar cane harvester? Yeah, I do somewhere. No, I think I have a Case IH actually. Um, I do. So I have, so this is from CD Models. Uh, they did these a long, long time ago, these Case I Sugarcane Harvesters, and they're basically impossible to find now. Um, I have seen the John Deere Sugarcane Harvester, and I like it. I think it's cool. Um, let me look, because I still may have one. Um, no, I, can't, I guess I don't. I thought I did, but I guess I don't. <laughs> Hey, you know what? How's it in South Dakota? Do you like Kill Brothers grain carts on... Yeah, I do. I do like Kill... Hey, what's up, BB Auto Wrecking? Um, I do like Kill Brothers grain carts. I think they look good. I think they're cool looking. Um, not a lot of guys use them on their model farms, probably because there haven't been a lot of them made. And so uh, if you wanted to be a little bit unique, you could run one on your model farm. It'd be pretty cool. I think I, I have uh, I have a couple at work that they came out with at my office, but um, I still have them in the box. I had to take them out and do a video one of these days. How much money do you think I put into farm toys? I too much. I don't have a clue. I mean seriously, I don't have a clue. It's um, <laughs> it, it's a lot of money. I mean like right here in front of me, which I mean granted I built a couple of these, but. I mean, heck, if I'm looking at the eight or ten items sitting in front of me, there's a thousand bucks sitting there easily all day. So, too much. But I've been doing this since I was a kid. So, I mean, I didn't accumulate this stuff just like that. You know, it's taken me a lot of years. I'm almost 40. So, <laughs> it's taken me a lot of years. <laughs> you know, I probably, like, it just depends. Um, 
I just bought a couple tractors this week, but I hadn't bought any probably for a month before that. So, like, I just go through spurts. And I try to buy things cheap, the, you know, the best I can. I try not to pay new price. I try not to get something uh, that's super expensive. And I try to build a lot of what I want. That uh, I kind of have this rule with my hobby. i got to take a drink, sorry. Uh, Florida orange juice, if anybody's from Florida. Thanks. <laughs> um, I kind of have this rule that if I'm going to buy a tractor, it has, I have to be able to pay for it with tractors. So meaning, um, through my Shapeway store, through selling something, uh, whether it's an in the box tractor or a custom, um, or like YouTube ad revenue, which is nothing. I mean, I've made probably like 50 bucks off YouTube in the last five years. So that's obviously nothing. But, um, so, so that's, that's why I did a lot of, got, kind of got into custom building to some extent is so that I can pay for the tractors I want because, um, it would be hard to justify spending my money from working at the farm or working at my other job, uh, on tractors. <laughs> so yeah. how's the new service truck coming along? Good. Um, I hope to have something to show you guys within a week or two. We'll see. Uh, it, a lot of parts are sitting in paint right now, waiting for me to get back to them. You need a high-speed disc. I do, actually. That's a good point. <laughs> I do. Do you know where I can get a J&M grain cart? Um, I, good question. Um, good question. I don't know. I, I would search on Outback. Um, out or Outback or eBay or someplace like that. I know, I think John Schomburg made a J&M grain cart, but it's 3D printed and it's really pricey. And I don't know if he's actually building them for people or if he's just selling the kits. I, I don't know the answer to that. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we need more J&M stuff. I think there are, and there, did Ertl make a J&M? I think they did. Um, have you seen the new Challenger MT700? Yes, I want one. They're awesome. <laughs> am I excited for the new? Yeah, I am excited for the new Greenlight Ford Duallys. I think those are going to be so cool. Uh, Greenlight, man, they're doing some awesome stuff, right? Um, the, the, I'm impressed with Greenlight. Like, you, they, they, you can get a lot of truck for not a lot of money through them. I think it's cool. Hey, hello, Massachusetts. Cool. We got a got an East Coast farmer out here. Cool. When you build kits, do you prefer 3D printed, plastic, or metal? And which assembles easier and which looks more realistic? Oh, gosh. They each have their place, and I like using each. I would prefer metal. I, I really would. Metal is durable. It paints better. You don't have to worry about breaking it just because you handled it wrong, so on and so forth. 3D printed, it looks incredible. I mean, there's just no denying it. Here, you know, here's my Kraus 3D printed field cultivator. It, it's as, it's awesome. I mean, look at the detail and all that. It's awesome. But it's fragile and it's expensive. This kit, the kit, not painted, not finished, whatever, cost me, and I made it, cost me almost 100 bucks. So, <laughs> there you go. Um... You know, but so here's here's an example of a plastic kit. This is made from Dave uh, Dave Holloman at Heartland Customs, and this is like a Salford type of thing, and um, it's beefy. He made it well, and it's you know it's got nice detail, but it's it's definitely not as detailed as my Kraus Field Cultivator. But this costs like half of what my Kraus Field Cultivator cost. So actually, finished. This costs like a third of what my Krause Field Cultivator costs. Um, and then as far as metal goes, so the best example of that would be like something from CD Models, which I definitely have somewhere. Aha. So like this 12 bottom plow, this is all metal. So it's nice and heavy. It's durable. I can drop it. I can just do crazy stuff with it. I can pull on it. I can whatever. And um, it's durable. So... I would prefer metal, but I use what I can use, so. All right. Oh, 
Matson's has a fifteen hundred or eleven hundred and fifty bushel J and M grain cart. Okay, cool. So check out Matson's miniatures for your J and M carts. Yeah, cool. And and Dale's a good guy. Like he's good to do business with for sure. Do you have a John Deere forty six thirty? I do not, Simon. I had to get one of those. Do you have any pictures of the dualies? Um, I don't. But as soon as they come out, I'll do a review and video on it. I promise. So because I'm gonna get one for sure. Have you heard about the green light down on the farm series? Yeah, so they're doing those Ford tractors uh, and some others too, I think, right? And I'm excited about that. I, I can't wait to see what they can do with tractors after seeing what they do with trucks. Oh, cool. Thanks for the follow on Instagram. I appreciate that. Okay, cool. They've got some on Boson too, so awesome. Good find there. The farm I work for has a Dimco 650. Nice. Um, ooh, I don't know where you're going to find... You're going to have to have somebody build one of those in uh, 164 scale. That's all there is to it. Uh, maybe get on the Facebook groups and, um, you know, I don't know. There's like Indiana Farm Toy Mafia and uh, Tennessee Farm Toys. Those are kind of the two I hang out on. There's 164 scale operators. They're, they're generally a pretty good group of guys, too. Um, there's some talented builders there for sure. Um, and maybe just ask, because somebody will come up with one for you, probably. Um, all right. Check it. And swipe down. Oh, okay, cool. 5388 case. I think you're right. Yeah, that, I think you're right. There is one of those. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for those, because first off, any, the more people making farm toys, the better, <laughs> because it's better for us. That means there's a better chance that we're going to get stuff, um, that we want. And then it also helps keep the price in check. So that's what we've seen really in the last 10 years. I don't know how, you know, some of you guys might be younger, but um, Ertl was getting carried away <laughs> with their prices, like really carried away with their prices. And Speccast came along. So like, especially in 116 scale, uh, and Speccast started doing all those high detail tractors and uh, they were doing them for like 35 and 40 bucks and they stuck it to Ertl. And, um, it kind of made Ertl cool it off a little bit. Like, Ertl high detail stuff, which is still expensive, but, uh, Ertl high detail stuff was really getting up there crazy. And then Speccast came in and, like, Ertl had to dial it back a little bit. So, competition is good. So, what things do you use when customizing your toy tractors? So, the things you need are, uh... A Dremel is like the best tool in the world. Um, just get one, get a flex head if you can because it help, makes your life a little easier. Cut off wheels, grinding wheels, so on and so forth. Um, needle nose pliers, especially if you can get the smaller ones that are spring loaded, those are awesome. Uh, of course, you're gonna need glue, like super glue, uh, something like that. With inst I like the Insta set. Um, styrene plastic, brass. Uh, and then you can go get kits from Shapeways or CD Models or Moore's Farm Toys or whoever. Um, go to town, putting them together. Uh, best thing to do to start is start with wheel and tire swaps. And I've got a video on it. Just check it out here on YouTube. Just type in like 164 scale tire removal or something like that. It'll bring it up. So. <clears throat> All right. Um, do you know anybody that makes 116? scale scale implement kits like in anhydrous bars or strip till um they exist you might check out chuck stevens uh he does some of that but i don't know that he's into implements too much right now um my, my dad actually makes some pretty nice 116 scale implements you might have seen him in some of my other videos but he's not making much right now because he just had his hip replaced so i don't know when or if he's going to get back into doing that. Um, we were working on an anhydrous bar uh, when he kind of had to have all that happen. So, um, but here's the problem with 116 scale implements. They are big time dollars because there's a lot of money in that. We were making, uh, we were trying to make anhydrous uh, row units. So like the opener, the knife, the closer. And after... So let's say six months of fiddling with it, trying to get the cost of down so that maybe we could sell them, uh, just just the units in case people wanted to build their own. Uh, we were still at like almost uh, 15 bucks a unit. 
And so if you're going to do a knife, 19 knife bar, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so there's some hurdles in the 116 scale world to get really good implements, but we're working on it. There's a lot of guys working on it. I mean, it's not, I'm, I'm on the outside on that, but there's a lot of guys working on it though. Um, can you show us the white truck with the seed on it? Truck with the seed. This guy? Yeah, you bet. So here is, so this is a, a top shelf replicas truck. And I, I don't remember, you can get these for like maybe 40 bucks. And so I, I use like sticky tack to hold the, the seed implement, the seed box and the, the tri, uh, poly tank and all that stuff down. That way you can turn it, tip it, whatever, and it doesn't fall off. And it's just got a simple 3D printed hose reel on it and then a, a, a 3D printed poly tank on the back. <clears throat> so let's just move some of this stuff off to the sides, kind of in the way. Okay. All right. Um, Yeah, I, that would be awesome if uh, Speccast makes a Vermeer self-propelled baler, and it would look sweet with that Mac Don. That Mac Don, that's incredible. I know it's expensive, and it's like 90 bucks for that thing, but gosh darn, that's an incredible toy. Where do you get your tire pullers? Um, <clears throat> oh my gosh, I wish you wouldn't have asked me that. Uh, Harrison's, is it like Harrison's mini truck customs or something is a truck guy actually that made those um i think maybe tim holker has has a version out now too so maybe check out accuscale farm toys um and if he doesn't have them on his website maybe shoot him an email because i think he has a set now too and they're maybe adjustable um i don't know that anyway i got mine from like harrison's custom minis i can't think i can't think of his first name right now but Oh, cool. Matson's has them. There you go. Under their tire section. That's awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for posting that up, BB. Um, all right. Hey, just join. What's going on? Hey, what's up, John Deere Man 8000 R? Um, you know, we're just talking toys. What's up with you? Um, are old trucks common with no rust down there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're rusted to crap. That's why I did this. That's why I did this guy up, Rusty, um, because yeah, no, old trucks rust like crazy here. Uh, you'll you'll find a gem occasionally. There's uh, um, there's this guy I know. He has a uh, like seventy eight Chevy, and he's it's just immaculate. It looks like it rolled off the showroom. It, it's like the you know, when the first time I ever saw it, I mean, I've known him forever. I didn't know he had that truck. The first time I ever saw it, I, I almost fell over because it was just, like, it's like I said, it looked like he just rolled off the showroom. But yeah, most trucks are rusty around here, the, the older ones. Oh, uh, how's real farming? Yeah, good. Uh, crops look good. We could use some rain. Um, thought we were going to get some today. It got really dark, and the wind blew like a son of a gun, and we got like five drops of rain. So. It looks good. We're going to start cutting wheat, I'll say, within 10 days to 14 days, something like that. Pretty, It's pretty close, anyway. Uh, wheat's turning real good. So, yeah, but it's good. Real farming yeah, looks look like a pretty good crop coming on if we can catch another rain or two here pretty quick. So, Oh, like the flatbed. Yeah, those generally have some... Yeah, they'd have some rust, too. Um, those old farm trucks generally generally are fairly rusty we've we've got an old um i don't know what is it was it like a c60 i don't know we've got an old we've got an old one that uh gets some very light duty occasionally and it's it's rough <laughs> what type of tool could you use instead of tire pullers uh there's a it's called uh panel puller pliers that it's got like these flat prongs on it you can get it like uh, Harbor Freight or you know a lot of different tool stores will have it and it's this almost the same thing as a panel puller plier you just you kind of slip it up in your wheels give it a hard squeeze it'll pull them out if you don't want to spend any money get some hot water or even better yet get a heat gun or, a, or an air dryer hair dryer and heat up the wheels and tires and a lot of times you can pull them off if it's not riveted on 
if they're riveted on, just drill it out and you're good. But, um, you know, like your typical Ertl, um, so like these authentics, let's say, these are like typical of, of a lot of Ertl tires. Heat those up with your, your hair dryer, give them a good tug, they'll probably come off. Actually, you know what, that authentic may not because that's a metal rim. <laughs> All right, let me show you a better example. Like this case IH four wheel drive. Those heat them up. You can yank them right off with a good hard, good hard pull. Hey, what's up, Sambo? How's it going, man? Uh, everybody sub to Sambo. He's got a cool channel. So uh, he's one of my favorite YouTubers for sure. I missed a question back here. I want to check it out. Uh, John Deere 116 scale. John Deere 9620. Hard to find. How much would one cost? Seven, eight hundred bucks. That's what they're going for right now. Um, they're, they're they're crazy. But here's the thing: don't rush out and buy one of those. Uh, as long as you don't care if it's the 620, because there is a uh, 570 and what is it a four something four whatever coming out this fall for the uh, anniversary. And so they're they're going to have more of those tractors out. They'll be like 150 to 170 or 80 bucks. And if you really want it to be uh, the 620, you can just swap the decal out. So Do you plant wheat on your real farm? Yes, we do. Uh, we planted about uh, 400 acres of wheat this year. <clears throat> it rained today at my house. Cool. I have I lucky you. <laughs> We're dying for rain right now. I mean, it's the corn's rolling pretty hard right now. Um, we need the rain. I'm really glad you got some, though. I hope hope everybody else is getting it since we're not. So, uh, What happened to the Speccast pickup, not the flatbed? What happens to the spec? Um, good question. I don't know. I know a guy with a late 60s F100 lifted. Looks beautiful. Oh, cool. I wonder if they have a rust problem in Oregon, though, like we have. I don't know, because maybe they don't have the winter we have. I'm not sure. Good question. Um, yeah, I, I second. You should check out Sambo's Stop Mows. Definitely got to check out his channel. It's cool stuff. Can I see the 164 scale John Deere right now? Yeah. And, um, I just saw it. I just literally just had it. Where is it? So, I'm one of those idiots that customized one of the farm show ones because I didn't know how many of these we were going to get. <laughs> so, these farm show ones are going for like, you know, 80 to 100 bucks now. And my moron butt customized it. But it still looks cool, right? Like, I, I put the rails on it. Eh, let's see. Let me get there. There are rails, flashers, all that good stuff. So, uh, you know, whatever. I'm never going to sell it anyway, so it doesn't matter if it sells for a million dollars. It's That's in my collection forever, probably. So, Of course, now they've got shelf models that you can just chop the crap out of. <laughs> How to take the tires off the Authentic 4450. They just pull right off. Um, I mean, like, it takes some strength. And if you got panel puller pliers or those tire removal tools, it is super easy to do. But uh, otherwise, just give them a really hard pull. They'll pop right off. Another thing um, you can try is you can maybe get some needle nose pliers in there and then pull, and they might pop off. But, yeah, they're just they're just on there with, like, some barbs on the wheels. So, like I said, they come off fairly easy. What would you recommend on a custom-built service truck? So I want to do a service truck video one of these days. Um and I, I actually just sold my service truck, didn't I? Hmm. One of you guys bought it. <laughs> uh, welder, for sure. Uh, I would put a crane of some sort on there. And um, maybe a generator of some sort. And then, of course, toolboxes. Uh, a hose reel or two would kind of look awesome on there if you guys did that. If you did that on it. So. Do you double crop soybeans on your wheat ground? Yes, we do. Um we try to do some of it on our irrigated ground. That way, if it's dry like this, once the wheat's gone, you go in and put the beans in, and you can run the irrigator on it. And we had, like, 80 bushel wheat beans two years ago doing that. So, <laughs> so yeah, but, yeah, we do try to double crop. Uh, we can't always get that done, but we try to. So. 
Hey, how's it going in California? Just moss and mold in Oregon, but it, yeah, okay. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, what other crops do you have on your farm? Corn and soybeans. Uh, so, yeah, corn, corn, soybeans, and wheat. That's our, that's our thing here. There's some guys that grow a little bit of sorghum around here, but it's pretty rare. Um, there's a couple guys that have tried things like Milo, and I don't think they had any luck at all doing it. So, Of course, there's some alfalfa around. We don't do that. We, so we're in the Mississippi River bottoms in Illinois. Um, so we don't do like alfalfa and things like that, but there's a lot of alfalfa around here, and everybody's cutting right now or baling. Everybody's basically finishing their first cut. Yeah, first cut right now, so... Nice. Yeah, that's cool that you got that truck. That's awesome. <laughs> What's the first tractor you ever drove? So we were talking about that the other day. Um, my dad and I were, actually. I think the first tractor I ever drove, kind of like sitting on his lap, was a, was a 1466 International. Uh, and we had a mounted field cultivator on it. So I think that was the first one. The... First one I kind of remember driving solo was a Farmall M. I was pulling the hay wagon, or the, well, you know, we were putting up straw, and I was pulling the straw wagon. Um, and then kind of the first tractor I drove sort of solo was a John Deere 7810. And then um, that was just kind of to and from the field, though. And then the first one I kind of like put like a full day of work on was a New Holland 9882. So that's why that tractor is really special to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, John Deere Boy 82. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. I, I remember that, John Deere man. Um, cool. Did you see the green light version of the Ram 2500 Harvest Edition? I have not. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> I haven't. Um, mm, that would be a great custom truck, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, down here in South Texas is mostly sorghum, cotton, and corn. Okay, cool. Um, mm -hmm. sorghum, yeah, so, okay. I've seen a little bit of cotton farming. We went to Florida to visit some relatives in 2002, and I saw a little bit of cotton down in Georgia. That was the first time I'd ever seen cotton. Now, like, now they've got a big cotton picker at, uh, what do they call that place in Moline? The John Deere Pavilion. Uh, so so I've kind of got to be like up close and personal and sit in a cotton picker. That was cool. I'd love to run one one time. I think it'd be awesome. But uh, Obviously in Illinois, we're pretty far from cotton country, unfortunately. I've got as far as real equipment a John Deere one and one half horsepower. Oh, cool. Those hit and miss engines are awesome. Um, I was like going to the steam shows and seeing those. I, you know, they're just, they're pretty cool. Uh, I like the sound of them. I mean, you know, it, it's that hit and miss is a cool sound, I think. So, all right. I wonder if I missed anything up there. Sorry about the buzzing on the phone. Uh, some buddies of mine are chatting. I don't know if you guys are video game people or not, but some buddies of mine are chatting about E3. I guess that's going on right now. And they're talking about, uh, I don't know what they're talking about, Battlefield Five or something like that. So <laughs> I don't have a lot of time for video games anymore. That's what sucks about being an adult. <laughs> But, uh, um, I still play Forza Motorsports every once in a while. And then I was playing, I don't know, some boxing game the other night. F Fight Night, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. Like I said, that's, it, I, I don't have a lot of time for anything right now. Come winter time, though, I, I get a lot more time to sit on my butt. <laughs> Toby Butler Brown. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. It's in IH colors. Maybe more for tractor colors. Okay, farm boy. I'll, I'm going to check that out. That's cool. Um, kind of sounds like I want one of those. Uh, those those Ram Harvest Editions. <laughs> um, have you played Farming Simulator? I haven't, but I want to. Like, I've got to find time to do that. Like, I, I really want to. Um, 
everybody tells me I need to. Like they say, it's it's awesome. So uh, maybe this winter I can finally check out Farming Simulator. Yeah, I think that would look cool, Jacob. I think that would be really cool. Do you have a toy Steiger uh, HP 525? Are we talking like a quad track, a uh, wheel tractor? Like, are we talking a new Steiger? Or are we talking like uh, Steiger, Steiger? Um, the toy green Steigers I have are the Lion 1000s. I have a KP 1400. I have a CP 1400. Uh, I have a Tiger. Um, three or four Panthers, uh, da, 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 a Wildcat, a Super Wildcat, and now I'm blank. So my goal, oh, and a 2200. My goal is to someday have one of every Steiger, green Steiger, ever made. Uh, I'm going to have to scratch build most of those because most of them are never going to get made. But that's kind of my toy goal, if you will. Uh, and I've tried to knock out one or two of those a year if I can although I've been really hung up on doing like the KP Panthers recently like the 1400 the 13 what is it 1325 1375 whatever um but I'm about done with those so I'm going to move into the earlier stuff for a little while I'm going to try to knock out some of those like the fat so and uh all of those the kind of the barn series stuff if you need Farm Simulator mods, message me, and I make mods, so I will help you with... Okay, cool, Wyatt. Yeah, like like I said, hopefully this winter I can check out Farming Simulator. I really want to. If you get wheels and pedals, it makes it better. Oh! So like a steering wheel setup, like for racing games they have, you could use that on Farm Simulator. That would be so cool. I like that idea. Stagger, Stagger. Oh, okay, yeah, Stagger. So I think I, I hopefully kind of answered that question and what I've got as far as Staggers go. Um, have you ever attended a farm toy show in Dyersville and is it worth the drive? I've never been to the the fall national show because we are always still farming. Uh, we're never done by the time that show comes up. One of these days we're going to be and I'm going to go. I have been to the summer show, which is in June, which you just missed. It was like last weekend. Um, several times. And yeah, I love it. It's great. There are tons of vendors up there a lot of people tell me they like the summer show better than the big national show because it's less crowded um so yeah i don't know how far away you live from dyersville but it's like five hours for me and i think it's worth it we always try to go and stay and you can't get a hotel usually right in dyersville unless you plan way in advance um but we usually stay in dubuque or somewhere pretty close to there and it's like a 20 or 30 minute drive um into the show from there so yeah, it, the summer show is absolutely worth it, and I'm sure the national show is worth it, too. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like the summer show. I mean, I can I can recommend it. I don't know if I'd fly across country to go to it, but I would definitely go if it was within five or six hours. Yeah, BB, I, I want to go to Oregon. So, I, like, some of you guys might know, I'm kind of an amateur photographer or whatever. And uh, I had never been out west until last year. Actually, almost a year ago, exactly. Um, and I don't know, I fell in love with mountains and all, and all of that. So, so, I don't know, I may retire out west someday. We'll see. But um, one of the coolest things ever was going through Wyoming. And... Um, I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't know that they farmed that much out there, I guess. You know, like, we're going through the Bighorn Mountains, and then you pop out on the other side of the Bighorn Mountains, and there's all this farming. And it was so cool, because there was a lot of machinery out there that I had not seen before. They, You know, they farm hops, they farm, I think, beets, they farm uh, just all sorts of stuff. So there was a lot of really cool equipment. If you guys follow me on Facebook, on the Furl of the Level Tractors page, you saw a lot of that stuff. So, um, yeah, I want to go on out to Oregon someday it, it's you know it's it's expensive to travel i'm not going to sugarcoat it it's hard to get away for that amount of time and i don't care to fly <laughs> and it's it's not that i'm afraid to fly it's i like driving because i like being able to see the agriculture along the way i love like i love that 
that we got to see all that farming in Wyoming. And then on the way home, we came through Kansas on purpose because I knew wheat harvest was going on. And so we got to see all these harvest crews working. And I mean, that was just, that was awesome. So someday I'll get out to Oregon and see what's going on out there for sure. Do you watch Toy Tractor Times? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I like I like uh, I like the stuff Jay does over there. Uh, I don't know Jay. I've met him a couple times. He seems all right. Um, but um, yeah, I watch him definitely. I like I like uh, like kind of when I get home at the end of the day, like by nine ten o'clock, uh, I'm kind of in chill out mode and I watch YouTube videos of farming and toys. That that's my that's my life. <laughs> <laughs> so um have you ever thought about a farmhouse yeah i so i have um we'll see I, I have thought about putting a farmhouse on my display what are some of the most recent purchases you've made um so it's been a while since i bought very many toys actually but uh these anniversary sets which i did a video on and then I just bought the last two of those anniversary sets. And they should be here this week. I'll do a video on them. Um, other than that, the green light uh, pickup trucks and like goose or trailers that came with them, I bought uh, those are those are pretty much those. So um, uh, let's see this uh, custom Salford from Dave Holloman. That's a recent purchase of mine. That, that was in February. But like I said, I just haven't bought a lot of toys recently. Um, I don't know. I'm in this weird place in toys where I, I feel like I need to thin out my collection. Like it's getting cluttered, but I still like toys. So I still buy, <laughs> buy them. <laughs> um, have you got any implements from Matson's miniatures? So I've never bought on his website, but I bought from him at farm toy shows a lot. Uh, he, he's a good guy. Like he, he, he sources his implements from other builders, um, so that's where he gets most of his stuff and uh like i said he, he's a good guy he's got good stuff this this massey 97 actually i bought from him a few years back at a farm toy show so do i have a 96 10 yeah Ta -da. and uh, i added rails made an eight row corn head uh chopper on the back New unloading auger, rear end steers, all that stuff, duels, so on and so forth. Yeah. Because we used to have a 9610 at the farm. Uh, have you seen a 116 scale Model D from Ertl? Yes, they have a precision version of that, and it's not very expensive. Uh, I've got one at my office. If I think about it in the next week or so, I'll do a video on it, because it's one of the coolest tractors I think ever made. I love the Model D, so... Yeah, it exists for sure. <clears throat> hey, what's up, NASCAR Pro? You show displays in Iowa. Okay, cool. Um, maybe you can tell us about the show up there. <laughs> um, do you watch down on the model farm? Maybe? I don't, I'm not familiar with that one. I, I, it seems like I do. I'll have to check it out. I mean, it's Saturday night. I'm not doing anything tonight, so yeah. I'll check it out tonight. Thanks. Thanks for the suggestion, Simon. I appreciate that. Uh, are you going to buy the new John Deere S790? Oh, man. Probably. <laughs> um, probably. <laughs> um, one of my favorite customs I've done is a 46 Willis uh, CJ2A farm Jeep made from a Johnny Lightning new Jeep. Oh, that would be a cool, that would be a cool custom. Cool. Is there wetlands here? Yes, definitely. We live. We are right by the Mississippi River. We are actually between the Mississippi and Illinois River. Wetlands are a thing. <laughs> what do you have versatile wise? Um, yes. There, okay, I'm gonna skip that real quick. Is there a John Deere 4450? Yes. Um, several versions, I think. Um, what do you have versatile wise? I have a Delta track. I have a wheeled version like this. This is custom. Uh, you can see I put all the handrails. You can get the kit to do this custom on my Shapeway store, FTLOT, <clears throat> um, if you want. 
I have the versatile track version of the same thing. I have the previous scheme of the versatile uh, paint scheme version. This is my 3D printed Bueller versatile that I did. You can get the kit for that on Shapeways 2. Then, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll, we're going to go for a ride. Hang on. So I have the entire uh, CD model set of versatiles. Hey, all right, Dairy Boy, I will check that out for sure. Yeah, I'll check out your channel. That's awesome. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, thank, thanks for the recommendation. Everybody else, check it out too. I mean, hey, guys, if you have if you have a YouTube channel where you're doing videos of tractors, toy tractors, whatever, feel free to uh, plug yourself on the chat here. So, um, what software do you do, use to design parts for 3D printing? Uh, I use SketchUp from Google. It's free. Well, it's like Trimble, I guess, actually now. It's free. Uh, you don't need the pro version. There are some plugins you need uh, to convert to STL, uh, which is what 3D printers use. There are a couple other plugins that will make your life easier for 3D printing. Um, search like SketchUp plugins for 3D printing on Google, and it will give you a list of what you need, basically. Like I said, it's easy, it's free. Uh, there's tons of YouTube videos on how to do it. So that's the best way. <laughs> Auto correct, yeah, G yeah, gets me often. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, go to Toy Tractor Time video and look at Chase Gunna, please. Look, I I'll check you out for sure, NASCAR Pro, definitely. Um, oh my gosh, one month away from corn harvest, I can't even imagine. Like, oh my, I don't even want to think about corn harvest yet. Like, we're you know we're kind of just down done with planting and. Um, I'm ready for a slight break. This this like couple weeks between here and and we harvest. This it's a nice time to kind of uh, get things fixed. <laughs> uh, my opinion on the Magnum with the smart tracks. Or, yeah, with the tracks in the back. Um, I think they're cool looking. The Magna track or whatever they're calling those. I think I think they're cool looking. Um, the toys are cool. I like them. I have one. I don't think it's at my office. Um, wow, I got, I got a hair thing going on all of a sudden. Um, I don't know how great they are on the real farm. And here's why I say that. There's a, a, a pretty good sized farmer near us that bought one when they came out and they just got rid of it. And they didn't really have anything bad to say about it, but they replaced it with a uh, Challenger completely, you know, new track tractor. So, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, how should I customize my John Deere 9510 Combine? So, check out... Uh, give Dave a call or an email at CD Models. He, I think he has kits for those, if I remember correctly. Uh, with like the rails and the the steering rear end and all that. I'm pretty sure he does. If not, I know Moore's Farm Toys does, or at least they used to. Um, but yeah, so I would do rails. I would do uh, a steerable rear end. I would do a hopper bin extension. And that makes them look pretty cool. Yeah, cool. I'll, I'll try to check out all you guys' channels tonight if I can. Um I use Blender. Okay, do you use Hum 3D or Torquoise? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I don't use, I, I just use whatever SketchUp is. Um, yeah, Blender is cool. I, um, I've considered trying Blender. Um, so I know it's more dedicated to 3D modeling versus SketchUp, so I feel like there's probably more potential with Blender. You know. I, I, I may check it out at some point. Oh, you guys are done with wheat. Well, lucky you. <laughs> yeah, it, those cases do sound pretty mean. They're, I, I like them. Um, sorry, I, like sometimes the, the chat catches, like if you're 
plugging your channel, the, the chat will, like, make me approve that. I don't know. I guess it's a thing and it's spam or whatever. But, obviously, I think it's cool if you guys want to plug your channel. Uh, yeah, so I, that's what I'm chatting on right now is my Samsung Galaxy S6. Um, I have a GoPro camera as well. And then I have my big DSLR Canon uh, 60D. Uh, that I use for still pictures. It does video too, but um, it's a little cumbersome for video. So, oh, Australia. Okay, cool. Uh, wow. I want to get to Australia someday. I've got some friends down there, and I want to see. I want to see that level of farming down there. I mean, it looks like you guys have some awesome stuff. I want to see those road trains, those trucks. You know, like they're like pulling three or four trailers behind them. I don't know. I just think that'd be cool to see. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, the S8 is so tempting to upgrade. Um, it's, it's really tempting. So mine is the S6 active. Um, so it's like, it's got the waterproof whatever and all that stuff. And so far, like I've had it for a couple of years now and, uh, it's survived farming. I mean, I drop it and run over it and pretty often <laughs> and so so far so good like i said i, I like it so <laughs> yeah i've gone through a couple of screen protectors i got those like glass screen protectors uh what are they called i i'm blank on it but uh yeah I, i've gone through those uh a couple of those they they shatter before the glass on the, the phone thankfully If you could change one tractor casting to be whatever you want, what would you change to, and also why would you choose it? Good question, Wyatt. Um, if I so if I yeah, hmm. so the one casting I kind of like it's it's so close, but they just screwed it up a little bit. Is the the Steiger Tiger from Ertl. Uh, they made it for the National Farm Toy Show a few years ago, and it's 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 ninety five percent awesome, but they put the wrong cab on it. They put the cab that they already had made from the Panther on it, and like like that that tractor was so close to being perfect. <laughs> but oh crap, I'm getting a message that my battery is down to 15% on my phone. So uh, maybe maybe a couple more minutes here and I better call it a night, I guess. Um, so I'll try to plow through these questions real quick. Um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, big farming in Australia. I've like I said, I, I want to get there sometime. Believe me, the life proof case is safe. Yeah, I bet. What Olivers do I have? In 16 scale, I have uh, a 1950T. Uh, Super 99, uh, I have a 1900, I'm just, I'm looking at two right now, oh, a 90, and a 990, uh, there may be a couple others too, you have to check out, I did a video on my 116 scale toys, you have to check that out if you want to see, there's quite a few Olivers in that, I think Oliver tractors are awesome, uh, I think I might need to go, pretty sad, I don't want to go, hey, that's cool, uh, it's me, I seriously appreciate you guys coming and chatting. That's awesome. I, I mean, we'll do this again because this was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I didn't have a whole lot to do today, and I'm like, hey, let's let's do a chat. So, uh, like I said, I really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me for an afternoon. Um, where do you purchase your tires and rims from when you do customs? Uh, Mini Toy Truck and Tractor. Adam Sunken is the owner. He's the greatest guy in the world. Uh, super nice guy. Will work with you. Uh, he has so many different <laughs> tractor uh, tires to choose from. Um, also, Chuck Stevens has some really cool 164 scale tires now. Uh, he has like road worn tires. You you got to check him out too. Uh, Dave at CD Models has some really nice tires, particularly implement tires and things of that nature. He's also working on uh, some more modern uh, tires as well. So that'll be cool. Um, Carson Bryan has those big LSW tires on the Shapeways store. They are super cool. Uh, and then there's some other guys that are doing Shapeways tires. Uh, Harvester 850, his name is Denny. Uh, Zeb Mueller. Uh, I think Bailey Wiltfang has some. There's others too. I know I'm forgetting some guys. They, uh, they're cool. I don't like 
3D printed tires. <laughs> but they're cool. They're super detailed, accurate. Those guys have put their heart and soul into them, and they're, those guys I mentioned are all good guys. I don't like using 3D printed tires. <laughs> um, yeah, farm near me. They farm a lot uh, here in Indiana, about 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 acres is a lot. of That's, that's some farming. Yeah, that's big time. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, we should do this again. I agree, BB. I would love to do this again. If I come to Australia to Kerrang and go to the pub, yeah, you bet. We'll, we will definitely. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you could have any tractor you wanted, what and why? Real or toy? Um, real tractor, Massey Ferguson 97. My grandfather had one. Um, he didn't own it. He worked for a farmer that had one. And the reason why is why I want it is my, uh, it's kind of like my dad's unicorn tractor, if you will. Like he, he just told me stories like how he just thought it was the biggest tractor in the world and how he could stand in the, the rear tire. Well, because you know, he was a little kid at the time. So that, <laughs> uh, toy wise, I, I, I don't know. Whatever's next. I love tractors, so whatever's next. I'd love to see a bunch of Steigers in high detail from SpecCast. Um, last question. Should I get a SpecCast John Deere 36 row planter to hook up to my... Yeah, get, get those those John Deere planters from SpecCast are incredible. I, definitely. They're, they're awesome. So, All right, guys. Gotta go. I'm getting all kinds of low battery warning. So... Um, like I said, I so appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. Thanks for all the awesome questions. You guys were awesome. And uh, we'll do this again, I promise. So, all right. Thanks. Oh, okay. All right, all right. I'll get, I'll get one more. Uh, I've got a 4450 with removable saddle tanks and 3D printed classic styles. We'll, we'll... Yeah, oh, that sounds cool. What scale buildings go with 164 scale? Uh, there's some coming from Mini Toy Truck and Tractor. Uh, and uh, there's...